Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm gonna to talk about alternatives to the Verizon Visa card. Last week I made a video because Verizon came out with their own Visa credit card, and it's a cashback card, and it has many great benefits if you are a Verizon customer. But unfortunately, not everyone is a Verizon customer. Although they do have the most customers and probably the best long-term reputation, not everyone uses Verizon. And with the Verizon Visa card, you have to be a Verizon customer to even apply for it. And so I wanted to make a video, not only for the people who don't have Verizon, but potential credit card options that would actually be better than the Verizon Visa card or equal to it. One reason you may not wanna have the Verizon Visa card is that you only get cash back in Verizon dollars. This means that you can't use your cash back outside of the Verizon ecosystem. Now, although it's great that you can use it to get a discount on your phone bill by using the Verizon Visa card, you can also do that with your debit card. And not only that, most of the categories where you get pretty good cash back, where you're getting 4% and 3% cash back, there are other credit cards which will give you the same benefits as far as the amount of cash back you receive in specific categories. And so I'm gonna talk about those today. And so as a quick overview as far as what categories you receive a lot of cash back in with the Verizon Visa card. With the Verizon Visa card, you get 4% cash back on gas, 4% cash back on grocery, 3% cash back at restaurants, 2% cash back with Verizon, and then 1% cash back with everything else. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over five credit card options, which you can use as a single card or in some combination of these five in order to get the same or more cash back in all of the categories that Verizon Visa card offers you for cash back. Now, the first card is a card that I actually use pretty often myself, and that's the Costco Visa credit card. Now with the Costco card, you get 4% cash back at gas stations, just like you do with the Verizon Visa card. You get 3% back at restaurants, which is the same as the Verizon Visa card. You get 2% at Costco, very similar to getting 2% at Verizon. And then you also get 1% back on every other item, just like the Verizon Visa card. Now the biggest bonus for this card, as well as the other four cards that I'm gonna mention in this video, is that you get actual cash back. So when you receive the cash, you can use that cash for whatever you want to use it for. The only downside to the Costco card specifically is that the cash is added up over the course of a year. And so during the year, you're not actually able to spend that cash back, but once the year is over, Costco will send you a check in the mail, and that check can either be used to buy things at Costco stores, or you can cash it out by taking it inside of a Costco and then getting your cash back in actual cash so you can use it at any other store or however you choose to use that cash. Now with many other credit cards, most of the time when you're getting cash back, there's a minimum balance of maybe $25 of cash back or maybe higher depending on the card. But once you reach that minimum threshold, you can cash it out and you can either send yourself a check, send yourself a direct deposit, or you can use it to purchase items on their rewards site for that specific card. And so that's the only downside to using the Costco card is that you do have to wait until the end of the year in order to use your cash back. The other potential downside if you're not already a Costco member is that you need a Costco membership in order to sign up for the Costco Costco card. And so technically, although the Costco card itself doesn't have an annual fee, you do have an annual fee by being a member of Costco. But if you're already a member or if you're already thinking about being a member, the membership is only $60 and it's $120 if you want the executive membership. And so you can basically count that as your annual fee for the credit card. Now, this is a card that I use very often as I'm already a Costco member and I actually did a video where I talked about how I use my cash back and how I'm able to earn enough cash back to actually earn free groceries for at least a month every year based on the amount of cash back I earn over the course of a year. And so make sure you check that video out. I'll have a link in the description. Option number two is another wholesale club, and that's Sam's Club. Now with the Sam's Club card, you get 5% cash back on gas. You also get 3% cash back on dining, restaurants, and travel. And then you get 1% cash back everywhere else, and there are no foreign transaction fees. And so if you don't happen to be a member of that other warehouse club that I just mentioned, and you actually do have a membership for Sam's Club, or you're thinking about getting a Sam's Club membership, then this may be a better option for you. In fact, the Sam's Club MasterCard actually offers more cash back than both Verizon and Costco in the gas category because you're getting 5% cash back. 
and you're still getting the same amount of cash back as the Verizon and the Costco card in the restaurant category. And I forgot to mention that Costco actually includes travel as well in that 3% and so does Sam's Club. So I just wanted to make sure I got that in as well. With the Verizon Visa card, their 3% cash back only includes restaurants. It does not include travel. Now, one of the downsides for the Sam's Club card when you compare it directly with the Costco card is that you don't get 2% cash back when you shop at Sam's Club. And so if you happen to be deciding between going to Sam's Club or going to Costco based on specifically their credit card, then the Costco card may be a better option. But depending on the types of items that you buy, you may want to check out both stores to see which one works out best for you or maybe even just whatever is available in your area because you may not have both options in your city. And just like the Costco card, there's no annual fee for the card itself, but in order to apply for the card, you do have to be a Sam's Club member. All right, the third option is the American Express Blue Cash Preferred. And with the Blue Cash Preferred, you get 6% cash back on grocery, you get 6% cash back on streaming services, and you get 3% cash back on gas. And then it's 1% on everything else that you purchase, but it also includes a $95 annual fee. So keep that in mind. And as you can see, as far as the alternative options I've mentioned, none of the other two cards, the Costco and Sam's Club, offer you any specific cash back on grocery. Now, while you can buy grocery at Costco and you'll get 2% cash back whenever you use your card at Costco, it's definitely not 4% and it's definitely not the 6% that the American Express Blue Cash Preferred card will give you. Now, in addition, as far as the gas 3% cash back, you also get cash back at places like when you use it for Uber, Lyft, or any other transit type transaction, whether it's public transit, parking meters, things of that nature. So it does seem that American Express is aiming at the urban community because most urban cities have their own public transit. You may have to pay for parking if you're in the downtown areas and there's you know limited parking in those spaces. And then you're more than likely probably gonna use Uber and Lyft because there's gonna be more options for Uber and Lyft in larger cities. Now, while the 6% on grocery and streaming subscriptions does stand out as the highest cash back in all of the cards that I'm gonna mention today, it is the only card that has an annual fee directly attributed to the credit card. Now, Amex does have the Blue Cash Everyday card, which will give you 3% cash back in those categories. And it gives you that cash back without an annual fee for the card. However, depending on how much money you actually spend on grocery, it may be worth it to get the Blue Cash Preferred, even though it does have the annual fee. You would need to spend at least $4,584 with the Blue Cash Preferred card versus the Blue Cash Everyday card in order to make up for that $95 annual fee. And for most families, or even some individuals, that's not actually a lot of money. That averages out to just $380 per month, which is less than $100 a week spent on grocery. And now that most people are either working from home or they're staying at home a lot more than they normally would, you're probably spending more on grocery, unless of course you're buying your items on amazon.com. More than likely, if you're going out to grocery stores and you can get that 6% cash back, you're doing that a lot more now than you have in the past where you may have spent more money at restaurants. And the 6% on grocery does not include warehouse clubs, so you can't use this card at Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, Target, big stores like that because American Express won't recognize those specific stores as grocery stores. So you have to go to a traditional grocery store. Now option four is actually a combination of two cards and that's the Chase Freedom card and the Discover It card. Now with these two cards, you get 4% cash back during a specific quarter on specific categories. And the great thing is that almost all of the categories, they overlap. And so one quarter you could be getting 5% cash back on the Trace Freedom card, and then that may be followed up or maybe later in the year, the second quarter, third quarter, or fourth quarter, you also get 5% cash back in the gas category. And so for all of the categories that they do give cash back for, you're getting that 5% essentially for half of the year, and the other half you're getting their general 1% cash back on any purchases you make. And so if you were to combine these cards by, of course, applying for both of these cards, then half of the year you could be getting cash back on grocery, cash back on gas, cash back at restaurants, and also cash back on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and Target.com. And in fact, specifically with the Discover It card, because this is a card that I use during the fourth quarter, that's when you actually get cash back at Amazon, Walmart, and Target.com. And you know in the fourth quarter, most people are buying items. You have Black Friday, you have 
most of the major holidays where people spend a lot of money and if you're spending money online then that is the best time to actually get the maximum cash back that you could potentially get by using those specific websites and some of you are going to use those websites no matter what credit card or even if you're using your debit card you're going to use those sites anyway and so you might as well get that five percent cash back for shopping at the places that you would already do especially during that time period where people are buying a lot of gifts and spending a lot of money on holiday type purchases now the fifth option last but actually is least is the city double cash card now although this card provides the least amount of cash back compared to the other five cards it's actually a great card to combine with any of the other cards i mentioned in this video and that's because with the city double cash card you actually get two percent cash back no matter what category your spending is in and so with the other cards there are specific categories where you get more than two percent cash back but if it's not in one of those specific categories then you only get one percent cash back and that's the same with the verizon visa card as well and so if you combine this with any of the cards including the Verizon Visa card then you can get 2% cash back on the items or at the stores that actually don't fall in any of these categories and for that reason this is actually a card I use as well because it gives you a base to work with and you don't really have to worry about what store you're going to when you have your city double cash card and so this could actually be the only card that you choose if you're not a person that wants to keep up with all the specific categories where you can actually use your credit card to make sure you're maximizing your cash back what you can do is just increase the minimum cash back that you're going to receive on all purchases by using the city double cash card to get two percent cash back now the great thing about all of the alternatives i've mentioned in this video for the verizon visa card is that you can actually use the cash back to actually receive cash, meaning that you can use that cash for whatever you choose. You're not locked into using your cash back as Verizon dollars, where you can only use it with Verizon or on Verizon products. And so you can use that cash back for things like actually spending money at other places. You can add it to your savings if you need to increase the amount of savings you have, or you can add it to your investment accounts to increase the amount of investments that you have. And so that's one of the things I like to do is that I'll use my cash back to actually add to my M1 Finance pie. And if you're not familiar with M1 Finance, M1 Finance is an investment app that allows you to buy fractional shares in companies like Tesla, Apple, Google, Netflix, Microsoft, pretty much almost any publicly traded company. You can add those stocks to your pie, which is essentially their word for a portfolio. And you can buy up to 100 different stocks within that pie. And all you need is a minimum of $25 in order to buy into any of the stocks that you add to or that you create your own pie with. And that includes ETFs as well. And that $25 minimum is the same $25 minimum that many of these credit cards require in order for you to take out your cash back and receive it as cash. And so as soon as you deposit that into your account, you can then transfer that over to M1 Finance or another investment app so that you can actually invest the cash back that you earn. And that way you make all of your spending an actual way to make money for you. And so if you'd like to support this channel, what you can do is you can use my referral links if you don't already have an M1 Finance account, as well as the referral link for a couple of the credit cards mentioned in this video, which I'll provide a link to all of those in the description below. And if you're not familiar with M1 Finance, I actually do have a review video of M1 Finance, as well as a step-by-step -step walkthrough, a tutorial of how to use M1 Finance to invest in fractional shares of stock. Now, one final tip as far as applying for credit cards, if you don't have any of these credit cards and you're actually looking into applying for some of these cards, make sure that you don't apply for all of them at the same time. In fact, it would be best if you would only apply for at maximum two every year. And technically it's two every two years because for at least two years, any card that you apply for, it will show up on your credit report. But as far as the impact it has on your credit score, it only has an impact for just one year. And so although this is a smaller part of your credit score, you don't wanna go out and apply for six, seven, eight, 10 different cards all in one year. Just get the one or two that would fit best for your type of spending or the specific categories where you actually spend more money. And then as the years go on, you can apply for other cards that better fit your additional spending or that covers all of the categories that you actually spend money on using your credit card. And so what's currently in your wallet? 
Are any of the cards I've mentioned in this video cards that you use? Or are there any other cards that you would recommend as far as cashback credit cards that earn more in any specific categories that you use? Whatever card that is, make sure you leave a comment in the description below and let us know what your favorite credit cards are and which ones you use. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you're not already a member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.